hydrogen peroxide is a very pale blue liquid and appears colorless in a dilute solution. It is naturally produced in organisms as a byproduct of oxygen metabolism. It is a strong oxidizing agent. In fact, it is such a highly reactive oxygen species that all living aerobes form peroxide enzymes to decompose the hydrogen peroxide formed within the body into water and oxygen harmlessly and catalytically. Structurally, the hydrogen peroxide molecule is non-planar. It has an open book structure. The presence of lone pairs of electrons on the oxygen atoms and the hydrogen bonding gives the molecule a different structure in gaseous and solid phases. In gaseous state, hydrogen peroxide has a dihedral angle of 111.5 degrees. Whereas, in solid state, at a temperature of 110 Kelvin, it has a dihedral angle of 90.2 degrees. This affects its physical properties. It has a melting point of 272.4 Kelvin, a boiling point of 432 Kelvin, a vapor pressure of 1.9 mm Hg, a solid density of 1.64 gram per cubic centimeter and a liquid density of 1.44 gram per cubic centimeter. Its viscosity is slightly higher than water at 1.25 centipoise. Its dielectric constant at 298 Kelvin is 70.7 .7 coulomb square per newton meter square. And electrical conductivity is 5.1 into 10 raised to minus 8 ohm per centimeter. Chemically, it acts as an oxidizing as well as a reducing agent in both acidic and basic media. So, let's now look at the reactions that take place in acidic media. In an acidic medium, as an oxidizing agent, hydrogen peroxide reacts with ferrous ions to form ferric ions. As a reducing agent, it reacts with sodium hypochlorite and yields water, sodium chloride, salt and oxygen. This reaction is also used in laboratories to prepare oxygen. Now, let's look at the reactions that take place in basic media. Here, as an oxidizing agent, hydrogen peroxide reacts with ferrous ions to form ferric ions. As a reducing agent, it reacts with iodine to form iodide ions along with water and oxygen. For example, if potassium hydroxide is taken as the base, then potassium iodide salt is formed. On exposure to light, hydrogen peroxide undergoes slow decomposition to form water and oxygen. Metals and traces of alkaline compounds hasten this reaction. And this is why hydrogen peroxide is always stored in plastic bottles and kept in the dark. In recent years, the demand for hydrogen peroxide has increased as it has found widespread use in pollution control treatment of domestic and commercial effluents. In laboratories, hydrogen peroxide is prepared from barium peroxide or acidified sulfate solution. To obtain hydrogen peroxide from barium peroxide, first 
Acidify barium peroxide with sulfuric acid. Barium sulfate is precipitated and an aqueous solution of hydrogen peroxide is produced. The excess water is then removed by evaporating the solution under reduced pressure. This will give us hydrogen peroxide. You can also obtain hydrogen peroxide from 50% sulfuric acid solution. The solution subjected to electrolytic oxidation to yield peroxidisulfuric acid. The peroxidisulfuric acid formed undergoes hydrolysis to form hydrogen peroxide. During electrolysis, hydrogen peroxide is formed at the anode. Peroxidisulfuric acid is formed as a byproduct at the anode. Hydrogen gas is evolved at the cathode. Commercially, hydrogen peroxide is prepared by auto-oxidation of 2-ethyl anthraquinol. First, air is passed through 2-ethyl anthraquinol to yield 2-ethyl anthraquinone and hydrogen peroxide. The product 2-ethyl anthraquinone is then reduced. For this, hydrogen under a pressure of 1 to 3 atmospheres at 4 degrees centigrade is passed over 2-ethyl anthraquinone. This gives back 2-ethyl anthraquinol, the reactant. This reaction gives a dilute solution of hydrogen peroxide. It is then extracted with water and the solution of the required concentration is prepared. It is customary to indicate the strength of hydrogen peroxide solution in terms of the volume of oxygen at NTP that one volume of hydrogen peroxide gives on heating. When the grade of H2O2 in volumes is given, its percentage strength can be calculated. We come across many uses of hydrogen peroxide every day. For example, as a mild disinfectant, as a cleanser, as a bleaching agent in the textile, paper pulp, leather, oils and fats industries as a pollution control agent in the treatment of domestic and industrial effluents, oxidation of cyanides, restoration of aerobic conditions to sewage wastes, and so on. Thus, we see that hydrogen peroxide is an important compound. The dihydrogen combines with almost all the elements except noble gases under suitable conditions to form binary compounds called hydrides. These can be represented as EHX or EMHN where E is the symbol for an element for example MGH2 or B2H6. There are three types of hydrides depending on the behavior and the nature of the bond formed between the hydrogen atom and the element forming the compound. The types of hydrides are ionic or salt-like hydrides, covalent or molecular hydrides and metallic or non-stoichiometric hydrides. Let us look at each type in detail. Ionic or salt-like hydrides are binary compounds of hydrogen with S block elements that are highly electropositive in nature. However, compounds formed with lithium, beryllium and magnesium exhibit higher covalent character. Ionic hydrides like sodium hydride and calcium hydride are formed by the transfer of electrons from the metal atom to hydrogen atom. This is also why they are called salt-like hydrides. 
Ionic hydrides are crystalline in solid state. They have high melting and boiling points. Their density is higher than that of the metals from which they are formed. In the molten state, they conduct electricity and, on electrolysis, liberate hydrogen gas at the anode, confirming the presence of negative ions of hydrogen in them. Let's study this using calcium hydride as an example. On passing current through molten calcium hydride, the compound dissociates into calcium 2 plus ion and hydride ion. At the anode, each of the two hydride ions combine to liberate dihydrogen gas and two electrons. This is an oxidation reaction. At the cathode, each calcium 2 plus ion accepts two electrons to give calcium. This is a reduction reaction. Ionic hydrides react vigorously with water to liberate dihydrogen gas. For example, sodium hydride reacts with water to give sodium hydroxide and hydrogen gas. Ionic hydrides decompose into highly inflammable dihydrogen and undergo combustion when strongly heated in air. For example, calcium hydride, when heated at 675 to 775 Kelvin, decomposes into calcium and dihydrogen. Unlike other ionic hydrides, lithium hydride is unreactive at moderate temperature with oxygen and chlorine gas and is used in the synthesis of other useful hydrides such as lithium aluminium hydride and lithium boron hydride. The reaction that takes place is lithium hydride reacts with aluminium chloride to give lithium aluminium hydride and lithium chloride. Lithium aluminium hydride is a powerful reducing agent and used extensively in organic chemistry. Lithium hydride also reacts with boron hydride to give lithium boron hydride. The second type of hydrides are covalent or molecular hydrides. Covalent or molecular hydrides are binary compounds of hydrogen with more electronegative elements such as P block elements. They are bonded by covalent bonds. For example, CH4, NH3, H2O and HF. Covalent hydrides are further classified into three types. Depending on the number of electrons and bonds present in their Lewis structures. The three different types are electron deficient hydrides, electron precise hydrides and electron rich hydrides. As the name suggests, electron deficient hydrides do not have the required number of electrons to write their conventional Lewis structure. In other words, they do not have complete octets. The hydrides of group 13 form electron deficient compounds. For example, in borane BH3, boron has three electrons in its outermost shell and forms three covalent bonds with three hydrogen atoms, resulting in an incomplete octet with only six electrons. Another example is aluminium hydride or allane. ALH3. Due to their incomplete octets, these hydrides generally exist in polymeric form. For example, BH3 exists 
as diborane D2H6. They act as Lewis acids, that is, electron acceptors, as they are electron deficient. Electron precise hydrides have the required number of electrons to write their Lewis structure. In other words, they have complete octet and are formed by the elements of group 14. For example, in methane CH4 and silane SiH4, both carbon and silicon have four electrons in their outermost shells and form four covalent bonds with four hydrogen atoms to complete their octet. Electron rich hydrides have excess electrons, which are present as lone pairs. The elements of group 15, 16 and 17 form such hydrides. For example, NH3 has one lone pair on nitrogen. H2O has two lone pairs on oxygen. And HCl has three lone pairs of electrons on chlorine. Due to the presence of excess lone pairs, these hydrides behave as Lewis bases, which are electron donors. These hydrides also form hydrogen bonds between molecules due to the high electronegativity of nitrogen and oxygen. Electron rich hydrides are poor conductors of electricity and are soluble in organic solvents. The third type of hydrides are metallic hydrides. They are binary compounds of hydrogen with D and F block elements. However, except for chromium from group 6, the metals of group 6, 7, 8 and 9 do not form hydrides. The inability of these metals to form hydrides is called the hydride gap of D block. Metallic hydrides are deficient in hydrogen and are almost always non-stoichiometric. For example, LAH 2.87, YBH 2.55 and TIH 1.5 1.8. The composition of these hydrides does not correspond to simple whole number ratio and also varies with change in temperature and pressure. And hence, these hydrides are also called non-stoichiometric hydrides. Earlier, it was thought that hydrogen, being very small in size, occupied interstices in the metal lattice in these hydrides. And hence they were named interstitial hydrides. However, recent studies have shown that except for the hydrides of nickel, palladium, cerium and actinium, the other hydrides of this type have lattices different from the parent metal. The property of absorption of hydrogen on transition metals is widely used in catalytic reduction and hydrogenation reaction in the preparation of a large number of compounds. Metals like palladium and platinum can accommodate a very large volume of hydrogen and can be used as media for its storage. Metallic hydrides are good conductors of heat and electricity and are harder than the parent metal. Today, we mostly use fossil fuel to power our growth. The demand for fuel is so huge that it is believed that by the middle of the 21st century, the world will run out of fossil fuel. For this reason, the race is on to develop alternative energy sources. 
One of the major alternative sources in use today is nuclear energy. However, it can only be used to obtain electrical energy, but only 20% of the total energy required constitutes electrical energy. So, for the remaining 80% energy requirement, scientists are still searching for a viable energy source. One of the most promising alternatives they are currently studying is the use of hydrogen as a fuel. Hydrogen has many advantages over all other options. For example, it is abundantly available, its combustion product being water, it is pollution free. It yields almost double the energy provided by jet fuels. For example, liquid hydrogen is used as a rocket fuel. This fuel has water as its product instead of harmful carbon dioxide, sulfur dioxide and other hydrocarbons. However, it is not yet used on a large scale basis because pure hydrogen gas is not readily available. Hydrogen gas is highly flammable and explosive to handle. Storage and transport of hydrogen gas is very expensive. The cost of production of hydrogen is very high at this point of time. Although some cars using hydrogen fuel are already in the American and European markets, commercial use of hydrogen as one of the most eco-friendly energy alternatives has still a long way to go.